Hey, and welcome back. It's been a couple of weeks since we um, finished the, the little break that we'd had before putting together, starting to get these shelves and all stuff organised. Um, you might notice one big difference. I've put up a couple of power boards um, onto the wall. I thought um, what I might end up doing with these shelves is to make the top shelf or that uh, second last shelf into a bit of a power station so I can put uh, you know, phone charger, iPad charger, uh, we'll probably put all the batteries and stuff for the cordless drills and that sort of stuff up there. So I thought before I built the shelves in front of it, pop out the bunions and pick up a couple of power boards um, and get them mounted and then we can just basically build the shelf in front of it. The power board I went for, it's a newish one that I hadn't seen before from Arlec. Um, individually switched, which I like. So you basically plug it in down the bottom but then you only sort of uh, turn on the switches that you want I kind of sort of really like that and the other nice thing about this one that I liked is that it's got two USB uh, outlets on it um, with a total capacity of 4.2 amps which mean they've both got a couple of amps on uh, either switch uh, which is great for fast charging iPhones and it's good enough to do iPads and iPad Pros and things like that um, the one thing that I didn't like about it was that it's only got a 90 centimeter cable, 900 mil cable, um, which normally would be fine. In fact, I've got one of these inside. This is a, obviously a white one compared to the black one that I've got up there. I've got some couple of white ones for the kids' rooms um, and they fit fine in there. We can position them where we want in there and just use the cable. But as you can see here on the wall, the, the plug being down on the floor, it was just too short. But I also noticed when I was out at Bunnings that they also now have one meter extension cables. I've never seen a one meter one before. Normally the, the shortest I'd seen was a, a two meter um, which normally means you end up with lots of stuff coiled around and that sort of stuff. Um, <laughs> little Juliet down there. Um, so these ones it's still got the, the, the socket on the back and I'll probably end up putting a couple of um, I'll probably end up putting a couple of um, child protection things on the back of maybe a nightlight something like that. Um, but yeah, so I thought one of those things are like individually switch, USB charger, 4 LA power board. Um, obviously I'll put a link in the description. They were about $39, so not the cheapest board going around, but I just really like the fact individual switches. They are reasonably wide apart. They're not super wide apart, um, but not close over like some of them can be. And just those two power boards, which means I don't have to worry about buying new chargers and stuff just to bring out here. Um, I mean, a decent iPhone charger can be 20 bucks so this kind of thing pays for itself anyway so I thought that you know obviously we've got two banks of four I thought eight's obviously a bit of overkill but I thought four probably wouldn't be enough um, so I just ended up buying two of them so and these are for the kids ones later on so essentially what we're finishing off doing today is building those two shelves right in front of us I'll just do that on a time lapse um, there's nothing really important to, to stop and talk about unless something desperately happens. Uh, I think we did a pretty good job of putting all the bits together before. Um, and then right at the very end, uh, I've already got them marked out where we're going to attach the uh, shelves to the wall. Uh, we'll try doing one of the uh, ones that come with it. Obviously I've gone back, if you haven't caught up with the video from two or three videos ago, where we first tried to use the uh, provided uh, wall mount that came with the, um, the product. Um, we'll try that again and see if we can do it properly this time. <laughs> very funny, very funny going back and doing the videos and realise that I'd, I'd completely stuffed it up. So we'll give that another go and see how it goes. Um, and then we'll either use that one again or um, we'll just use my regular RAM set mounts that I've been using before. Uh, I want to try something a little bit different. I did try it with the one that was over there uh, and that worked brilliantly. Um, just a, a way of actually attaching the shelf to the wall um, by using the top rail rather than trying to do it on the side. Um, that worked sensationally over there before when I was putting that one together. Uh, so we'll do that here. We'll bring the camera right up close so you can sort of get a bit of an idea as to how that's going. So on with the build and uh, yeah, I'm basically just going to get on building these two shelves.
so that's those two done. Um, pretty easy build. Obviously I made the mistake with the first one by not having it flush up against the old one. So I just kind of had to drag it across a little bit. It wasn't too bad. Um, obviously we want to try and do that once it was loaded up. Um, and that's what I always say. Try and build them exactly where you want them to be. Because they can be a bit finicky to, to, to move once, um, once they're built and set up. Um, but we're sort of lucky in that case, they were fairly easy just to, to drag that middle one across over to the left to give us enough room um, to get the third one up. Pretty happy with the space that we've got for the entry for the toilet. So we're checking that before, just wanted to make sure there was enough room to, to get in and out of there, and I'm pretty sure there is. Um, we don't use this room a lot at the moment, and that toilet doesn't get used much at all, so uh, access space to the storage is probably better than um, having a full-size door access to the toilet. But um, still plenty of room to get in and out there, so happy with that. Uh, so what we're going to do now is just take a break. We're going to reset the camera um, and you can see how I'm going to do the uh, mounting these two to, to the back wall. Cool. The shelf itself we're going to attach around here. I've sort of checked with uh, the stud finder and um, that seems to be a pretty good spot to put it in. So what we're going to do is put our top rail in. Easier said than done. There we go. So where's that mark? Right about there. So roughly there. And so what I want to do is I'm going to mark here. Geez, that's a long way out, isn't it? I'm not sure that screw is going to be long enough, but we'll give it a go. Um, yeah, it's right up against the architrave, so um, we're going to mark out here, going to put a um, spot on the shelf with our center punch, just using a standard uh, center punch. That's the case it comes in, and uh, that's what it looks like. So if I'm talking there, Yep, you can see that pretty well. Uh, so I've got my center punch, got my hammer. So what I'm doing is just laying that up against the wall. I'm going to make some noise. And so that just gives me a bit of a starting point for my drill. Um, the drill bit size is a 8mm drill bit, as used before. And that's just based on the size that we need for the whole thing. So start off nice and slow. Hold it in it. So that's gone all the way through, obviously. What we're going to do now is actually take this top bit out again. Okay, so take two of getting this shelf mounted to the wall. Um, in our last video we tried to use the included um, shelf mount that comes with the Montgomery shelf. Uh, it's a plastic little thing that kind of pulls itself into the plasterboard. Um, but as we saw just before, it didn't quite work. And I'm pretty sure I tried to do it the right way this time. Uh, this time I'm going to use my usual technique of just using a ram set wall anchor. It's the same sort of thing as the um, plastic one, except that when you screw this one in, it pulls the, the, the shaft down and opens these things up into a butterfly and there's four little things that open up into like a little butterfly thing. Um, but then the trick is once that's all the way down, you can then very easily unscrew that and then screw in whatever you want um, back into the fixture that's now fitted in behind the wall. So um, that is something I've always just used for my other things. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just basically to screw this thing in. You can see that it's got a couple of teeth there. Uh, on the side and what you want to do is to try and get them to dig into the plasterboard so the whole thing just doesn't rotate around as you're screwing. 
Um, uh, you can use your hand drill to, to bring some of this in. I often find that with a power drill, um, it does tend to sort of over torque it and catch it and just kind of rip it. So um, I don't know, I just like to be a bit on the safe side and put in five minutes of hard work and just do it gently myself using the, uh, just a, a regular screwdriver. So let's do that. Just got to be super careful those first few things, first few turns as you're twisting it, you can sort of see it wanting to pull into the wall and tear a little bit just as it's starting to bend but you sort of do half a dozen turns uh, and it gets to a point where it just gets a lot easier to start bringing it in, you don't have to worry about it tearing so much. There we go. Right, I've got that in about as far as I can get it. Um, the actual back plate of the thing has started to come in. So what I need to do now is just gently undo it. And there you go. It just takes that little couple extra soft turns. And that'll just quickly wind out. So I've now got four little things tucked up behind there, stopping anything from um, pulling the shelf outwards so that's awesome so what I'm going to do now is <coughs> back to where we were before I'm going to load up some washers I'm going to take my bracket and then just load up the back of it with a heap of these zinc washers to space it out I can feel that the bolts hit the front of that thing on the other side. So that wall now fairly tied tied up against the wall. And then to finish off I can just simply pop the final shelf on top. Now, typically I would do the same sort of thing but um, use the, the side frame, that's what I've been doing in the past. Um, but I just thought using that, just easy to get that, um, mark your place um, and then you can take off the top frame, put your, put your holes through, whereas that can get a little bit tricky trying to work your way around um, the back of these things because they're typically you're sort of walking up, uh, working against the wall and you can't really pull the sides out um, the way I just did with the, the top frame. So. Hey, cool, so we are done for now, I reckon. Um, as you can see, we have pretty much wrapped up the shelves, got the two shelves moved back together, and I've spent the last hour or so uh, packing them, moving things around. Uh, I moved this shelf up a little bit higher so we could get the spare microwave and uh, toaster oven stacked in under there. Did something similar on the uh, previous shelves that we built. Um, dropped the bottom shelf down a little bit so the golf clubs were nice and tight and we could get those boxes in under there as well. Um, you might have noticed um, I've um, attached the cables to the wall just to give them a little bit of support. Done the same thing under there. That way the uh, 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 extension cord isn't taking all the weight and that sort of stuff. So that's a good, good okay, idea. Okay, so I've just moved the camera over to where we actually had it pretty close to where uh, when we first started this whole thing a couple of weeks ago. So you can see um, the two new shelves that we've put up there uh, the old one, which we've sort of reorganized a little bit um, to help us out. Got our new shelf up in the corner. That was the first one that we built. Um, another one, which you, uh, which was sort of used to put all the toys and stuff. We've shoved the uh, bed over, oops, shoved the bed over into the corner um, and gotten rid of the two kids' desks um, that were there as well. And obviously we keep hand around just down the bottom there is the sink so that gives you more or less the full 360 of what we've been doing in the studio um, we're going to be able to move fiona's sewing stuff out here we're going to have plenty of room in the middle obviously for um uh, a cutting table and a picture framing table and that sort of stuff so i've been really super happy with the way that it's come out and i'm um, really glad that we've sort of been able to document everything for you 
Um, the shelves have been great. Probably spent $120, $150 on the whole shelf. So um, for that sort of pricing, uh, it's been excellent to sort of just tidy all this up uh, and get this to a place where we can really start at looking to use this room again, uh, which has been terrific. Hope you've enjoyed this content. Uh, we've got lots more coming. We've been working on some other shelves out in the uh, main garage, which I'm looking forward to showing you all. We'll probably start uh, doing some work on that tomorrow morning. Got some pegboards and stuff to go up there. Uh, if you like the content, don't forget, subscribe, thumbs up, um, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that sort of stuff. Uh, Instagram in particular, we've got some really good photos and stuff for some new and old projects um, that we've been putting up there too. So I've been getting a lot of really good positive feedback for the Instagram stuff too. So hope you've enjoyed it. Thumbs up and uh, looking forward to seeing you next time. Cheers.